Fancy lad. Fancy lad. Fancy Podcast lad. fancy lad. Fancy Podcast lad. gonna talk to my friends. Fancy gonna share a lad. thought. Gonna have a laugh. Fancy That's what I thought. Lad. Fancy lad. Fancy, fancy lad. Podcast. Fancy lad. Fancy, fancy lad. lad podcast. Uh, yeah. And we are back. Oh, we are back. And ooh, it's a little spooky this time, actually. That's true. You know what? I'll say that we're back, mm-hmm. but also say we're back with a motherfucking Halloween edition. Nice. What the fuck was that? What? that? What, that noise? Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was you. Oh, no, that just came out. I thought you were playing a soundboard or something. Oh, wait, let me hit it one more time. Yeah. I, I did hit a button. I didn't think it was going to do anything. Let me hit it one more time. Let's All see right. if I, here, here we go. Boop. The motherfucking Halloween edition of the Fancy Lad Podcast. Oh, it says more if you hold it down. Let me hold it down more and see if it says anything else. The Fancy Lad. The Fancy Lad. Is this like a a wham thing? Podcast. Oh, okay. I was like the jitterbug. Right, yeah, jitterbug by wham. Oh, yeah, yeah, by wham. Of course, everybody knows that. Yeah. Um... But anyways, yeah, we're back on the Fancy Lab Podcast, and of course in the Fancy Lab Podcast studio. And as I previously stated, it is spooky. And as the soundboard indicated, it's the special edition Halloween episode extravaganza Mm -hmm. of the Fancy Lab Podcast. Right. Which is why it's extra spooky. Right. And that's what the soundboard gave that away? I was scared by it. Because it was Wham? Because it was George Michael. No. No. The the part before the jitterbug. Oh, okay. Because it sounded like shit. <laughs> so that's scary to you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I never told you this, but I have a crippling fear of feces. Really? Yeah. What What do you find frightening about them? Them? Like, yeah, fecal matter. All right. Them as a a whole. What what do you find frightening about fecal matter? How's that? Thank you. Um, it stinks. It stinks? Yeah. Yeah. It does stink. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's just... Let's just... I need to get my mind off of it. Yes. Hold on real Speaking quick. Speaking of Let me stinking. Just... Oh, God. Just cracked into a sweet baby clown shoe right here. Hold oh, on a second, man. Which uh, which baby clown shoe is that right there? It's a Galactica, as usual. Oh, dude, gotta love the Galactica. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think it's about time that we uh, introduce our very special guest for this spooky spectacular. You know what? I'm scared with just the two of us talking, so I think I'd feel a little bit better if we did have a third person. So I think it is time. Mm-hmm. Um. Master of games mm-hmm. slash horror movie expert slash movie buff in general, Peter Darling, a.k.a. Cool Peter, a.k.a. Cruel Peter. Sp- oh, spooky. Oh, uh, Cruel Peter. Jeez. Well, I mean, I was going to say it's good to be back, but if you just start slinging names around like that right away. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's for the Halloween season. And we don't know what side of Peter is going to show up. Cool or cruel? Cool or cruel. And maybe maybe even, dare I say, ghoul, Peter? Let's stick to cool or cruel. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> That's true. We don't want to. Big's already scared. We don't want to muddy the pool here. Yeah. I've seen a lot of shit, all right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's just dive right into it. You know, that was one hell of a Halloween that we all had. My favorite one yet. <laughs> yeah. what, what, what day was it? Was that just last Sunday? No. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. It was Sunday. Wow. Time flies. Spooky times. Because, mm-hmm. of course, today is Tuesday, mm-hmm. which would put us at the 2nd of November. And as you're listening to this on Spotify or Stitcher or wherever you're listening to it on, you know we're doing this live. This is live. Whatever time you're listening to it, you just happen to. And if you pause it, this happens that we're going to pause too. Could be a pee break. Probably a pee break. Probably one of those classic Big Zo pee breaks. Usually but. Is. You know what? Let's just get right to it. You know, mm-hmm. this since we're since this is a a very special 
edition episode, we're not even going to talk about skateboarding this time. That is spooky. You know what? Dude, fuck skateboarding, man. I'm scared. I'm so sick of it. So what, so what do you want to talk about? It's time we branch out. Oh, okay. You know, let's keep it, you know, light. Let's keep it fun, you know. Mm-hmm. Why don't we just talk about one of the biggest contemporary horror movies that's out right now? Oh, you know, that does sound light and fun. Peter, what, what do you think? What do you think? Does that sound light and fun? I'm trying desperately to think of another horror movie that's out right now, and I cannot. So I guess we're just going to have to talk about Halloween Kills. I mean, we're going to have no, we have no choice. I mean, we could talk about, you know, the French Connection made by Wes Anderson, you know. Uh, I thought French Connection was the Gene Hackman movie. Yeah, dude, that's the joke. <laughs> Wes Anderson's movie is actually called the, like, French Les you know. Is that French for Connection? Probably, yeah. That makes sense, then. But, you know, let's just take a stab at Halloween Kills. How about? I mean, did, wait, a stab? Was that a joke? It's a yeah. scream reference. Yeah, oh, was... okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we'll get into the Scream 5 trailer. Right. And okay. also, I got to say, there were a lot of Scream references in Halloween Kills. I don't want to jump the gun, but there were. I think I missed them. They were... Did you hear all the screams? Um... Just promoting the... They... I'm pretty sure there were five of them, actually. R- really? Yeah. Only five. You know what? I think we should just take a quick break, and then I think we should probably come back and just jump into this uh, this this juggernaut of a movie. I mean, oh my god! Come come on! Oh my god! Are you kidding me? We got to talk about this movie. You know, the fans have been waiting for us to you know mm-hmm. do a movie edition of the podcast for way too long, or at least one fan. I just assumed it was the the, uh, the backdoor pilot to the Fancy Lad Movie Podcast. That's what I'm saying. There this we go. goes well. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe we'll start another podcast. And if it goes poorly, still, why not? Yeah. Well, we'll see. You know what? We'll be right back. Uh, yeah. Yankee Doodle came to town without his macaroni hat. All he wore was a crown about eight gold rings, some Louis Vuitton, and I'm pretty sure he had clown shoes on. He was walking with a stride like I'd never seen, and he'd drink it from a can so crisp and clean. So we introduced ourselves just to see what was good. After all, he was new in our neighborhood. Well, my name's Crook and Sam, and I'm here to say that I make a mango cushion in an American way. The natural mango flavors really make it the tops, not to mention all those shoe melon hops. Mango American comes from clown shoes beer is conveniently available throughout the year. So what do you say, boys? Have a drink with me? Yeah, I'll take one. Yo, I'll take three. For more information on Clown Shoes Beer or where to purchase Clown Shoes Beer, visit www.clownshoesbeer.com. Uh, yeah. And we are back. Oh, we are back. And mm, that was a good break. Oh, my God. A fantastic break. You know, one of those breaks you dream about, quite, oh. quite frankly. You know what? You keep bringing it up, and I know I keep saying how much I've been dreaming about breaks, mm-hmm. and I really feel like tonight's the night maybe I d- tell you about that a little bit. Well, if it was tonight of any night, I'm I'm assuming that it was more of a nightmare of a break. Right, I know, but I feel like talking about my my dreams, yeah, even though they're about breaks, mm-hmm. would be you know more appropriate if we were doing like a Nightmare on Elm Street type movie, right? Which we're not. So I'm going to leave it for next time. No. So let's just jump into Halloween Kills. Mm-hmm. Might I be the first to say, you know, nothing scarier than a guy with a hockey mask. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, like, because he drowned in the lake and then, and then the mom was the killer and then. Right. So that, well, comes... that was a lady in a hockey mask. then. Oh, yeah. Sorry. My bad. Yeah. Sorry. So you're opposed to women playing sports. I fucked up. Okay. Well, Nigel's the one who said it, okay? Not me. Oh, that's don't, right. my bad. Don't that's my bad. Burn me at the cross, okay? I'm just kidding. Everyone knows we're talking about the doll with the red hair. Okay, now if we're talking about Michael Myers, okay, the star of Austin Powers and Wayne's World. Mm-hmm. 
Wait, have you guys watched uh... the Love Guru? Yeah, Love <laughs> I was. <laughs> you know, what? I have Love Guru. Seen the Love Guru? Can we just talk about that real quick? Mm-hmm. Uh, don't spoil it. I still haven't seen it. Okay, first of all, love the trailer. It stinks. Oh, sorry to spoil it for you. That's really not that surprising. It really is. I gotta say, besides all of the um, really bad jokes that didn't age well. It's really just Michael Myers trying to uh, rewrite the same sort of humor as Austin Powers, mm-hmm. but just falling so short. But, you know, I love I love what he was going for. Actually. I mean, that's kind of what the trailer looked like, honestly. Yeah. But, you know, we'll save the Love Guru podcast for Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Today, we're talking about the two... 2021 release Mm -hmm. of Halloween Kills Mm -hmm. written by Danny McBride music by John Carpenter there's a lot of other people involved Mm -hmm. Peter help me out here who else is involved uh who is it you got Judy Greer yep Judy Greer is in it Mm -hmm. Tom was a big Judy Greer fan who is it Anthony Anthony Michael Hall is in it Mm mm-hmm the Breakfast Club man himself, mm-hmm. SNL alumni. Mm-hmm. Got that one guy, uh, Will Patton. He comes back, character actor Will Patton, who I cannot think of what else he's been in. Mm-hmm. Mike Patton's brother. Yep. Also, General Patton's son. Mm-hmm. Got a uh, Michael Michael McDonald. Of course, Big Zo's Big Zo's favorite. A lot of Mad TV fans in the house tonight, and I don't want to spoil it. But when Michael McDonald hit the screen, I yeah. said, is that Michael McDonald? And Tom goes, no. Wait. Okay. Immediately. Listen. And then, and then said, he goes, wait, maybe? And then he goes, yep, yep, yeah, it's him. But just his assurance on that immediate no took right. me by surprise. In Tom's defense, Michael McDonald has aged 20 years in the last 20 years and looks different. Hey, he looks like he, he permanently has like eyeliner on. I don't know if that was part of the costume pick or if maybe he just has really like thick uh, eyelashes. Mm-hmm. But it, you know, it's just like, no, that's not him. Well, you know what? Should we go around and just give our first uh, sort of just general feelings on the movie yeah why don't you start us off okay i'll start off you want oh you want me to start it off oh i'll start it off i'm not as afraid of starting it you're, you seem like you're stalling though. no 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 i'm about to start oh okay go for it i had a burp and i'm about ready to start now where's the burp? after i'm done with the it I, it came and passed um oh, we didn't hear it you're gonna have to play it back it was like a i'll check it later yeah um yeah, I, I, I'm ready to start after I'm finished with my sentence, which is how I usually start things. So I'm about to start at any second. Mm-hmm. Starting now. Okay. Halloween Kills. Oh, good start. Okay, let me just say, for the record, I don't really remember the Halloween that uh, this is a sequel to that came out in, what, 2018? Mm-hmm. I do remember the scene from that with the teeth, and I remember the very ending where he's burning in the house. But, you know, I just, the thing about Halloween is the original is so bare bones and suspenseful that you just can't come close to doing that in this day and age. So, all things considered, I enjoyed it, but, you know, it's like... I always feel like they should just put this one to rest. You know, they've had so many stinkers out of the hall. This is what I'll say about the Halloween series as a whole. There's out of the three big franchises, it has the worst movies out of all three of them. I'm speaking of Nightmare on Elm Street, Mm -hmm. Friday the 13th Mm -hmm. and Halloween series. The Halloween franchise has had some huge stinkers. And this is definitely an improvement from that, from, let's say, 4, 5, Curse of Michael Myers, H2O, Halloween Resurrection. But, you know, I'm just, you know, I shouldn't compare it to the original two, but 
That's where my mind goes. So I give it, let's say, you know, I did enjoy it, though. I would say I give it three and a half skulls out of five. You're going to skulls instead of uh, William Shatner masks? Should I have wait, should, should we save the rating for the end? No, you can give it no, a rating now. Fine. You gave it a rating. I just yeah. think, you know. All right, three and a half William Sh- No, well, I like the skull rating for Shudder. You know, Shudder. Try to get them as a sponsor. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, three and a half seems like a really high rating. I also enjoyed it overall. Wait, what is this out of three and a half out of what? Five? Out of five. Five okay. skulls. Sorry, I was yeah. I was going to give three. Mm-hmm. And then I felt bad and decided to toss in that half skull. Mm. That's kind of a pity half skull. I just want to get that out of the way. Peter? Well, I'll just I'll start with my number. Uh, two and a half skulls. Right down the middle. There's, there's a lot that I enjoyed in this movie. And a lot that really sucked and really was reminding me of the lowest points of the series. But... You mentioned there's so many lows in all the Halloween movies. I'm a sucker for all of them. I'll come out and say it. I like the Rob Zombie Halloween movies. They have their merits. I even forgot about the Rob Ho- I know. The Rob Zombie Halloween movies. They're terrible. Yeah. But they're great. Oh, my God. Halloween 2 especially. That one is really, really rough. Yeah. But, you know, there's uh, there's enough like fun stuff, and it has a few moments that shine through ha- for in Halloween Kills that I'm still having fun watching it, even though... It's not schlocky, but it's almost so bad it's good. And you know what? On that note, I I did think about making a, a meme. I don't know if you... You're not on Instagram, so you probably won't get this. But Tom, you're on Instagram, so you might get this. Hmm. You know... Well, what? Maybe. I might get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just... I, was, I, I don't know. That reaction just took me by surprise. There's a, mm. Oh, mm, oh. Memes. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, it's is pretty it popular. Is it Evil Rob Zombie? Yes, it's Evil Rob Zombie. <laughs> I haven't okay. seen it, but I could guess. Yeah, yeah. And it was going to be Evil Rob Zombie makes a remake of a horror movie that's actually good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Hmm. Uh. I, I like the Halloween <laughs> remake. Call me crazy. The Rob Zombie Halloween remake. I haven't seen any of the, the Rob Zombie ones, but I got to give love to uh, Yell Exit Haverhill native Rob Zombie. <laughs> yeah. And just love to that meme in general. I don't know why. You know, it's a uh, it's a good meme. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah, that's no, good. Mm. How do you like? Mm. 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 That's how I show appreciation for things. Well, Peter, do you agree that this is, or at least I don't know if this, but the last two Halloween movies, this one and the last one, 2018 Halloween, that it's the best rendition of Michael Myers since Halloween two. Oh, yeah, easily. I would very much agree with that. Yeah. As do I. Do, do I Do I get to give a rating? On yeah. The oh, movie? oh, well, you need to give your whole spiel. Oh, okay. I just didn't know that we were done with Peter's uh Oh, yeah, no, that was, that was me oh. signing off my spiel. I did not indicate that properly. His spiel has been signed off mm-hmm. for the record of the spiel. Spiel. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, uh... So I watched the 2018 one last night, which I had not seen before. Mm-hmm. Mm. It was good. I enjoyed it. It was enjoyable. Um, and then Big Zone and I just watched Halloween Kills. Also enjoyable. But I will say, there was only one time in both movies that I was like even close to being scared or startled. And that was in the first one. Just like a kid like pokes like a a body with the butt of a gun. And I was like, oh, that body's not dead. He's going to move. And then he did move. And I was like, ah. And I was like, ah, I knew he was going to move. But there was nothing else scary about like either of them, especially Halloween Kills. I thought it was cool. I liked the idea of like the town being like, fuck this. We're going to kill him. And then also just like having mob mentality about shit and not also just being bad but uh it, it's not scary at all and i mean i guess maybe i mean halloween the first time i saw halloween was frightening as a child you know but 
I didn't think these were scary. But I did enjoy them. So I'm giving three William Shatner masks. For both movies? No, just for, for Halloween kills. Okay. Three. I'd give the other one probably a three as well. But I mean, they're not. They're they're good. They're fine. They're enjoyable. Yeah. I'm not going to probably watch them again. Yeah. I agree with uh, Tom saying that I wasn't scared. Um, despite all the, the urine-soaked pants that I was wearing. I got... Well, that's I, just for comfort. Yeah. I got to say, I, I wasn't actually scared. But you know what? I think it's... I think it is the, the fact that, um, you know, we're not at the uh, adolescent stage anymore. I think we need to find some kids. Yeah. I mean, I well, we, need to, we need to find some kids. We need to strap them down. We need to show them this movie, Clockwork Orange yeah, yeah. style. Mm-hmm. I don't, See what I don't they expect. Think. I don't like expect to be scared watching these movies. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I at least expect to be able to acknowledge points where they're like, oh, that that could have been scary. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I don't feel like that happened. I don't feel like, like especially Halloween Kills, I don't feel like it was a slasher movie or anything. It was more like a like town coming again. It was kind of more like a, a fucking zombie or post-apocalyptic type thing where people are coming together to like fight a thing, you know? Not like running and being scared and not knowing what's happening. Which makes sense because it's part of like a trilogy, you know. But well, it's like the unruly mob coming after Frankenstein, right? Isn't that what the classic unruly mob is? Yeah, oh, I think you mean they, they went after Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, mm. not true the doctor. horror expert in the house. No, true Mary Shelley <laughs> fan <laughs> in the house. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So, what scared you the most when you were a kid? Out of the things that I watched, I guess the first horror movie that I watched was Chucky, <laughs> otherwise known as Child's Play, which oh, was Child's scary. Play scared the hell out of me. Which was very scary, but also made me think like, all right, scary things aren't that aren't that scary. But all right, the thing that really freaked me out when I was younger that I could not watch, and I remember that was it was. Uh, Instead of that, I would go into the other room and I would watch, like, my dad was just watching, like, you know, Friday the 13th or Halloween or something like that. But it was at least two Halloweens that I wouldn't watch the uh, Eureka's Castle Halloween special because it was too scary. <laughs> and my sister was in the other room watching it, and I'd be watching actual, like, horror movies with my dad. Eureka's Castle? Yeah, you, you remember Eureka's Castle? I remember it. Yeah, there was a Halloween special, and it was oh, okay, too that, fucking scary. The Halloween special. I could not. Yeah, I liked Eureka's Castle, yeah, but it's the a, Halloween I, special. I missed that. I thought, in general, just Eureka's Castle was no, too no, scary no. for you. No, no, no. No, I love Eureka's Castle. Yeah, yeah I love I love Lamb Chop. I love all kinds of Muppets and stuff. Well, Even, even ones that aren't Jim Henson. It's funny uh, you mention that, because I just started a subscription to Paramount+. Plus. Mm-hmm. Oh. Just so I could watch Are You Afraid of the Dark. Oh, it did. Because I was going to say, some of those Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes, I would argue, are more scary than Halloween Kills. Well, that's the other thing mm-hmm. I was going to bring up that used to scare me is specifically the Are You Afraid of the Dark with the, I think, like the Joker guy that comes out of the comics with the, the ghastly blue, grinner. The, the mm. blue, the blue ooze. Yeah. Yeah, that shit. That, that's a two parter, I believe. Ooh, freaky. Hee, spooky. That this is one. a spooky episode. Zebo the clown, naturally. Oh shit! Sorry, Zebo. Yeah, I mean, we you're cool now. He's cool now, Pete. Don't be. You don't have to look at him like that. He's cool now. And uh, the mall episode where they get, uh, you know, stuck in the pinball machine. Mm-hmm. But um, I just watched uh, the tale of the dark music. I don't know if anybody remembers that one. But you know, those bullies in the beginning of Halloween Kills uh, made me think of that episode that I just watched because that starts with a bully. In the suburbs. You remember when they say in the Halloween Kills, they go, don't fuck with the Mulaney's. They, like, kick the kid over. Yeah, the kid with the red hair. Yeah, a little Lonnie, right? Yeah, 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 the kid with the little red hair. Yeah, he had a shitty haircut. Yeah, shitty haircut. Um, And I was thinking to myself uh, while this was going on, not only was I thinking um, about the, the, the tale of the dark music episode, which is, in fact, scary. Mm-hmm. Um, a kid dies in that episode, mind you, of Are You Afraid of the Dark? In um, real life? 
No. Oh, okay. I mean, in the episode. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. But I was thinking to myself, man, I kind of wish I had a kid so that kid could get bullied on. And then I could go to that kid's dad and, and kick, kick the ass. fucking shit out of him. What you if know, his the... dad's way tougher? No, that won't happen. Oh. I've never, in a, I've never been in a fight, but I know that that will not happen. Oh, okay. But, you know, the classic, my dad could beat up your dad. I'm going to make that a reality for Dude, my I'm kid. I'm fucking excited for you. Hell He's also never met a dad he couldn't beat. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I like to beat dads. Mm-hmm. I like to just beat them off, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so Halloween kills. Now that we got our, our, our skull rating. Now that you know our ratings, now we're going to tell you why. Now that you got 2.5 maybe, skulls. Maybe we'll change our ratings at the end. Yeah, three maybe skulls. Maybe we'll convince ourselves. And, th- and 3.5 skulls. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just go down. Let's just, uh, let's just start with the beginning. How about Peter? What happens in the beginning of the movie? Well, that's the problem. If you hadn't just watched it, actually, also, Tom, I wanted to say, I really appreciate your dedication to Halloween, watching Halloween the day after Halloween, mm-hmm. just to be ready for this. Well, you know, I figured I now I don't have to watch it for next year. Right, when the third one comes out. Yeah, right. Well, fuck it. Yeah. But I, the beginning of the movie felt like a mess mm-hmm. because I hadn't seen the first one in whatever it was two years, and I didn't. I remember liking it, but I don't really remember what happened, and it just jumps right in. Well, I'm talking about it. It jumps right into the 1978 Halloween. Well, no, it jumps right into the ending of to the ending of 2018, and then jumps right into then flashes back. Okay, so my memory is so bad that I didn't even remember that first scene jumping. You just right thought in. that was still 78. Okay, no, I, no, I, I just genuinely can't even remember right now. All I, right, I will say, I'm sorry. I, I will say, as someone who just watched the other one, it really jumps in very well. If you just watch the other one, if this were a series where they dro- just dropped one every week or something. You know, it'd be fucking or if you watched it right before you watched the other one, uh, it does continue right where it left off. If I had watched this three years ago, there's no way I would fucking remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't remember these characters. And then it just jumped into the flashback, which I actually really liked the flashback jumping back to 78. Yeah, that was actually one of my favorite parts of the movie. Yeah, I was saying to Bigzo while we were watching it, I said th- th- they did a good job at uh, making this like aesthetically look like a movie that would be from that time. Like, you know, like the the shots, like the even the I feel like the blood when the the partner got shot in the neck just looked pretty uh, pinker than you know your modern blood. Yeah, the style was a lot different than the rest of the movie. And I i mean, I think intentionally they were trying to shoot it to somewhat look like the first Halloween. And they played off of like shooting uh, with like the shadows too a lot, which they do in the first one. And then, yeah, once it fast forwards to present day, the the movie looks kind of completely different. Well, yeah, I think they even change aspect ratios. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't notice that. I did not notice that either. I'll have to watch that on the rewatch when I watch this five years from now. But all well, of the 78 stuff, because they frequently jump back throughout the movie. All right. of it worked really well. And I actually uh, learned this from Tony. Everyone loves Tony. Hell yeah. Uh, loves Tony. When they were doing the shots of Loomis, that's just like practical effects. Just someone wearing a bunch of makeup to look like Loomis. And I, I f- thought for a second, I was like, did they afford to like map that onto someone's face with CGI right now? Yeah, because Big Zo was I like, said, is he still alive? I was like, isn't that guy dead? And I was, I was like, like how did they get this? I don't think he is because they made a big deal about how he was dead in the first one or like the the 2018 one. Um yeah, all prosthetics. Yeah. It looked great. Yeah, it looked fantastic. It really did. I mean, the you know a lot yeah, of the just a nice surprise that that they do a lot of that CGI mapping like now, and that shit does look surprisingly good. But it, you know when it's happening, you know, you're just like, wow, this they did a good job on this. 
Did you think it was like that? Uh, you seen that Instagram, like the deep fake Tom Cruise? Uh, no. Okay, then forget I said that. <laughs> um, <laughs> man, I need to stop having all my cultural references be uh, Instagram. The man loves to scroll. What can I say? Um, but yeah, Tony, you know, yell exit Tony real quick. The mm-hmm. the true Halloween diehard fan. You know, Halloween being his favorite scary movie. And yeah. Probably Holiday. Holiday, but also it means so much more that being his favorite scary movie since he's such a horror fanatic, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, Peter, would you say that's your favorite scary movie? Oh, no. Not not even... Uh... Definitely not even my favorite franchise. Big not fan. Even close. Yeah. Ooh, bud. That is a tough question. I did not come prepared to answer. Well, you know what? Let's let's start with let, you know what Bigzo asked me earlier. What what scared you when you were younger? Oh, uh this one's so I actually really did not get into horror movies until I was sort of in my late teens. Um they weren't in my household. It wasn't that I was like banned from watching them. I just like mm. didn't get introduced to them. No older brother to do that to me. Mm kind of thing and uh i have a vivid memory of this i don't even remember when this came out so it's probably gonna make me look like a huge dork but after seeing the sixth sense and then uh one night i had to like like a couple nights after i saw the movie i, had to I go haven't pee. seen it so please don't no spoilers uh i had to go pee in the middle of the night and there's that one scene where he has to like walk by the kitchen and he sees the i got my, my thing my i can still hear in the you. kitchen <laughs> that Tom can't hear right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I just like, I still must've been like 10 or 11, like kind of old to be scared by something like that. But that moment always just stuck with me. Uh, just something about having that in your house. Haunted house stuff always weirds me out. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I never, I never believed in, you know, I mean, I, I obviously believed in ghosts and stuff at one point, but at a pretty young age, I was like, all right, that shit, doesn't exist however there are serial killers you know and uh i would always i would always check behind the shower curtains when i go to take a dump just make sure there's no one in there that's gonna like stab me while i'm taking a dump although what better time to go you know doing what you love yeah you know exactly the one thing that in life that you enjoy you know i'm not gonna lie to you i was a huge bitch all right was yeah <laughs> now i'm hard as nails but before when i was a little whippersnapper coming up i would have to you know i had my driveway and when it was dark out i would just run to my front door uh which was probably about you know 20 feet away just because it was all pitch you know all dark and uh i was scared you know, sometimes out there in the dark, you don't know what's out there. Could be a Jason, could be a Michael, That's could be I'm a Freddy. Saying. Well, I doubt it's the it's Freddy. Not the Freddy because you're, you're awake. Because yeah. you're well, awake. If he had fallen asleep in the car or something. Oh, that's yeah. true. You could have fallen asleep in the driveway. Mm-hmm. Could but, be a, a jackrabbit. But jackalope. Oh, big. What were you scared of growing up? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Wait, let me uh, ADR that in. Big Zo, what scared you when you were a little bitch? <laughs> well, I'm glad that you asked. I mean, when you were a younger little bitch. <laughs> oh, a a okay. littler, younger bitch. Okay, there's a lot of, you know, repetitive uh, B words going on right now. Um, one would have sufficed, really, but um, I'll, I guess I'll answer your question. I'll, I'll dignify you to answer your question anyway. Don't worry, I'll take most of this out and post. It's fine. Oh, okay. Um, for me, the big one was Pet Cemetery. Oh, yeah. And I saw that one when I was really young. Uh, but mostly um, Zelda from Pet Cemetery. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about the princess, neither. Mm-hmm. The little green guy, then. Yeah, the little green guy. Actually, no, there's a, there's a lot from that movie that's uh, pretty spooky. But you know what? I got to say... When I think about a, a real, effective, genuine scare, even though I didn't see it till high school, I think of 
the dumpster person behind Mulholland in Mulholland Drive. That's just such a jarring one, though. Oh, my God. In a movie that's it's... like tense and suspenseful, but isn't horror until it's just there. So effective. Just the buildup and just that that payoff of something actually being there and then having it be such a just scary figure, which was, uh, I forget who played it, but played by a woman, just like the, uh, the, uh, now I'm not trying to sound sexist. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, the, the, the demon from the exorcist that pops up also played by a woman. Weird. I'm just seeing a common thread here. But you know what I loved about Halloween Kills was how mm-hmm. progressive it was, you know? Started with uh, that uh, that uh, beautiful woman in the beginning. Uh, I'm just kidding. That kid dressed up as a woman. Right, it was, that, it was the oh, Halloween right, right, costume, right, right. which took me a while to get. That's where it was the, the Bonnie, was the, uh, Bonnie was, and Clyde. It, right, it was, yeah. yes, from the first one. Right. Yeah, again, listen, if you'd watched it just 12 hours before, you would have got it. Yeah, and Peter kept saying to me, no, they're not a gay couple, Big John and Little John. It's just two guys living in the Michael's house who are just really good friends. You never had a roommate before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you have four male roommates and you all call each other John, but, you know, based <laughs> off of different size. Big, Big John... John. Medium, medium size, John. medium large, John. Yeah, medium, medium John. small, John. Yeah. And small, John. you got mean, medium, and then, low, John. Yeah. <laughs> well, you you mentioned Big John and Little John, mm-hmm. and like I actually liked them as characters. Thought it worked, but there were just too many characters in this movie, especially bringing back everyone. I just it it seemed so random and. uh weird just like okay we brought back the little girl whose babysitter was killed she still lives here we brought back this nurse from the first movie you remember her from that one scene it's like okay she's there mm-hmm. it's you know for the diehard fans which i am not right I, I didn't know who they were until they had to show flashbacks for it i mean i think it's kind of cool and also like a town like that, like, you know, or most towns, you know, a lot of people do end up staying there, you know, so it is believable. Uh, and also, like, a lot of those people probably haven't done much since then, you know, so. Yeah, I guess you could split that either way. It's like they had such horrible trauma that they're just going to kind of stay there or they're right. gonna get out of town. Or, and I mean, like, at like acting wise, like a lot of them could just be like, hey, you want to be in this movie? And it's like, oh, I haven't really oh, done shit. anything since like fucking 92, but of sure, why not? Take the job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was, I thought that was, I thought that was fine, especially since it's a movie where like they were like, all right, now the whole town is like going fucking crazy and like wants to kill him. So it's like, all right, so feasibly there would be people still there but uh i don't know also it's like i don't know that it is a weird approach for like that kind of takes it away from the like the horror genre altogether right you know if it's like i don't know it it just didn't even seem like a like a horror movie at all neither of them really did yeah i mean what what came to mind in the scene with all the firefighters um, Space Jam. Well, I mean, I feel like, you know, this is why we shouldn't talk before the podcast because I feel like I've already, uh, we already touched upon this, but I know that that's what you're referring to when you told me that the movie felt very John Wickish. Mm hmm. Um, should have saved it for the podcast. Damn that's it. what I'm saying. Do not talk to me unless it's on the podcast. <laughs> But yeah, he had so many more kills in this movie and also just really branching out with people coming at him with a bunch of different weapons and him being like, okay, yeah, I'll use this to kill you instead Yeah, of, uh, you know, just a knife. Except for the one I did, uh, like, he had the opportunity to just take her knife and kill her. I forget what the character's name is. 
but decided to just uh, break that oh like, that tube light. And the then stab her in the. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you think that throat? would be the, that glass would be strong enough to actually like stab I don't through think so. you? I feel like it's it movie magic. Be. Yeah. Okay. I think that was Michael really expressing his creativity. You know, they used movie magic to create a light bulb strong enough to go through a human neck to kill that poor actor. Mm-hmm. So. Well, yeah, I mean, in the in, in in I'm sorry to keep going back to the 2018 one, but they keep talking about how in, you know, the first Halloween that he killed five people. Right. OK, so that's killed five people in the first one. And they keep talking about it, about how like big of a deal that is like over these two. He's must have killed like fucking over 30 people so far. There's scenes where he kills five people. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, the body count is a I mean, it's a quote. Ice tea. The body count. Mm-hmm. And that's I don't think I can't say anything past that, but the body counts getting high. Ice tea had a band called Body Count, which made a song called Body Count. Yeah. Great Maybe rap metal. Yeah. Good right. stuff. Actually, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's actually kind of a good album. You're yeah. actually right. Yep. Yeah. You know, actually, my, my brother from actually California. had that album. It's pretty good. Um, Peter's from the same place that Russ Pope's from. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's put, from Santa Cruz? Yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke it. I did not know that. I left it in the kitchen. Um, Tony was talking to me about how he, he felt like there was just so much blatant fan service in this uh, movie. But really, I mean, maybe you could shed a little more light on that than me. I mean, besides all the silver shamrock uh, masks, I wasn't really picking up on, like, too many callbacks, you know, directly. Uh, they missed me. Again, I I don't even really appreciate, like I was saying, having all the cast members there Yeah. again. Like, I, I thought that's what you're going to be talking about, but I didn't see any of the mask stuff. From Halloween 3? Yeah. I missed that. Those three kids with the skull, and then he put oh, them all shit, on the that's playground so with yeah, the, uh, the yeah, pumpkin yeah, yeah. and the skull and, and the witch. They had all, one. all yeah. three of them. Yeah. 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 Wasn't paying enough attention. Well, this movie really just grabs you when you watch <laughs> it, clearly. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of grabbing you, you know... Uh, I don't know if you want to take a break or not. I'll let you decide. But Big Zo has to take one of his uh, classic Big Zo pisses real quick. All right. Why don't you take a classic Big Zo piss, then we'll come back after that. Uh, yeah. And we're back on the Fancy Lad podcast. Back from another classic Big Zo pee break. And we're talking Halloween kills. The Fancy Lad horror movie podcast edition. Uh-huh. Spooky. We've got a glaring omission so far. We haven't talked about the star of the show, Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, that's true. Laurie Strode. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she's not in this much. No, it's pretty disappointing. Probably has, how I would guess, I would guess total of 10 minutes of screen time. Maybe, maybe 12. All of that seated and or laying down. Yeah. Or clutching her side. Ouchie, I got stabbed. Get over it. It is kind of frustrating, though. She went from, like, doing a whole, like, Sarah Connor bit, Mm -hmm. and then she's just in bed. I mean, she did get stabbed. Right. She did get stabbed. That's true. Actually, the surgery bits were actually pretty gnarly. Like, watching them, like, piece her stomach back together in that scene. That was actually one of the more... I, I feel like the stuff without Michael is some of the more jarring parts for me. Like that, and genuinely, when I, for a split second, thought that that kid actually did swallow a rusty razor blade, mm. were probably actually the two closest parts I got to becoming scared. You believed that kid? For half a second. Oh, you fucking sucker. I said, no way could you he. No, in this day and age. But then they sucker. showed the vomit with the razor blade. We gotta blade. find out where they're buying their fake vomit. Dude, That's that, looked that looked insanely yeah. real. They put chunks in it. I think it was the chunks. Yeah. Bloody chunks. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, so 
I don't know where we left off in the story, but from the earliest recollection I can think of, mm -hmm. uh, then they went to the roadhouse, as seen in season three of Twin Peaks. Yeah, didn't they? Wasn't like the flash forward straight to the roadhouse after they do the whole, like that's like the third scene, isn't it? Oh, what, when they're at the place at the talent show? Yeah, the near, bar. Yeah, the bar. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that pretty immediate, Tom? Yeah, I think it was pretty immediate. And they had those. And the guy came up and was like, I know this is a talent show, but some of you may not remember that 40 years ago, a few people were murdered. And that was a talent in itself, mm -hmm. being able to publicly speak like that. Right. We thought he was going to do his bird whistling. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was compelling. All those people decided that evil dies tonight after that. Because they all just rolled deep out of the bar. They did roll very deep as yeah. soon as they heard that Michael was out there. And it wasn't Michael. It was that penguin-looking motherfucker. Yeah. That Dane DeVito, Batman Returns, penguin-looking motherfucker. Who I'm not sure if you remember, he was in the, the beginning of the first one. He had an umbrella. That guy was probably so stoked to get a call back for this. Like, oh, thank God. That umbrella bit paid off. Mm -hmm. They told me not to bring the umbrella. I knew they would like it, though. Do we know how he got a slash on his forehead? I would assume from the from the the bus crashing and getting turned over. Mm -hmm. It could have been when he crashed the car, leaving the bar. Oh, yeah. And it's yeah, weird yeah, yeah. that good, they said that there were, or was he just one of the two escaped victims uh, or escaped uh, inmates, rather? Um, two unaccounted for, yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it just him and Michael Myers? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. That makes and when they sense showed sense. Michael Myers on the screen, they blurred it so you didn't get to see his face again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just want to give actually a warning at this point mm -hmm. for all the listeners out there that we will be giving some spoilers to this movie. This is a good time to give that warning. 57 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. So if you haven't seen Halloween kills, mm -hmm. you should probably pause this episode and watch, watch it right now. And, but you know what? Pause this episode, wash up mm -hmm. and then watch it. Yeah. Stay safe out there. Thank COVID. you. Oh, COVID. Um, so, yeah, there's the roadhouse, and that was just a great time. Well, let me ask you guys. If you were at a bar, all right, now this is a hypothetical. Say it's Halloween night. You're at a bar. Talent show. You know, everyone in town's there. You're having a good time. That's All of a sudden, going. right, that sounds like a good time. Yeah. All of a sudden, people decide you're going to go on a manhunt to kill a serial killer. What 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 do you do? What, what, would you join in on that, or would you be like, oh, sh shit, no, I was going to go home and order Domino's. Well, we know Big Zo's down for whatever. Yeah, right. definitely. So he'd do it. Oh, you know, um, 100% for conformity, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm down for whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever the herd wants to do, I'm following. Some people say, I'm DTF. Big Zo says, I'm DFW. Which also actually, you know, totally encompasses DTF as well. Yeah, if the crowd wants to fuck, I'm <laughs> fucking. All right. I think, uh, you know, that decision would really depend on the rest of the talent show lineup. You oh, don't know what okay. you're going to miss. That's true. That is true. Have we seen the ventriloquist yet or not? Oh, yeah, no, we've seen the ventriloquist. Yeah, oh, but he God. might have an encore. That's true. Guys, stick around for that encore. Shit. Oh, oh no, puppet! Oh, you're not shit. supposed to. Say, oh, that's a bad word. Shit. You're not supposed to say shit. shit. Oh, and he keeps yeah. saying it. Oh, when well, he says okay. shit I'm done. again. I'm done. Shit. That was a good act. I I would have liked to see it. That was a good act. Yeah, you know what? It's just kind of like Nicolas Cage in Willy's Wonderland. You know, I just I'm surprised that Michael Myers didn't say more. You know, I've always been the strong, silent type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He what? doesn't speak a lot. Michael never fucking says anything. But you know what? I, I do like how... Uh, let me interrupt you. He does talk in the Rob Zombie Halloween remake. What does he say? He's just a whiny little shit. Really? Yeah. 
Well, it's it's Michael as a kid. Oh, okay. Because it's got a whole like prequel thing in it, oh, which yeah. is really the highlight of that version of Halloween. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Do you feel like Michael is a nerd? Again, if we're going off the Rob Zombie Halloween, which is definitely canon. <laughs> yep. Yes. Um. Now, why do you think Michael wears the mask? Big he's a nerd. Star Trek yeah, fan. Big yeah, big Star Trek fan. Okay, that explains it. Um, you don't think he was just a big fan of that one Twilight Zone episode? I don't think that's what the mask was based off of. I don't think they made William Shatner masks based off of the pilot of the Twilight Zone. No, but I'm just saying he was such a big Shatner fan based mm-hmm. off of that episode that he was like, now I know this isn't a Twilight Zone mask, mm-hmm. but... That seems like a lot of that seems like a lot of forethought for a six year old. And where is a six year old in nineteen seventy eight sourcing these old Twilight Zone episodes? Yeah, where are they where are they making these connections? There's no IMDB app, which again, my favorite app, Yell Exit IMDB. Okay, well when he was six years old, Mm -hmm. he didn't get the mask. True. He didn't get the mask until So where was he watching all these Star Trek episodes? It flashed forward to seventy seven, you know? Mm. Yeah, he was dressed as a right. clown. Mm. So that must when have been six years old. So that mask must have been based off a Star Trek movie. That's what you're saying. I'm not. I think fam- you're right. I'm not familiar with the timeline, but whatever, whatever falls into uh, 1977. Is that word again? Time. <laughs> yeah, it's heavy. Uh, in, and uh, why doesn't Michael J. Fox just go back in time and just kill Michael Myers? In Back That's to the Future question. 4. Because you see what his mom looked like? You're going to leave that behind? <laughs> yeah, he's like, seriously. Good Thank point. you, Peter. Good. Well, Doc, I know I should use this power for good, but have you seen my mom? Yeah, dude, his mom's fucking thirsty. <laughs> You've seen the movie. She's oh, a fucking man. thought, bro. Leah, yeah, like it Leah Thompson. That hoe over there? Yeah, Leah Thompson. Thom- hey, it is Thoughtum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's weird that, uh, you know, Tom keeps asking me if I'm ready for Cocktober. You know? I have not said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it would be funny if he did. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The one time, what? Now that we're not doing a skateboard podcast and we're doing a horror movie podcast, which is so prestigious, Tom shies away from the penis jokes, you know? Oh my God. He talked about his subscription to Boner Plus the last episode, and now he can't make a Cocktober joke. He's just joke. trying to give you your dick time in the sun. That's all. It's unbelievable. You know, maybe it's because you're here, you know, he's got to class it up for me. Exactly. <laughs> Peter, I did not say Cocktober. I would not say that. I Peter, did not I say do not that. Sanction once. this kind of behavior. I haven't said Cocktober once this month. <laughs> <laughs> or last 20, month. It's been 27 <laughs> days. <laughs> you know how hard that is for me. So back to Halloween kills. Mm-hmm. Um. So after the roadhouse, they go. Michael Myers gets in the car. Yep. They're like, "Oh my God, it's Michael Myers!" But it's actually the penguin. It's actually the penguin. Then he goes and kills the kids on the swing set. Not the penguin, Michael Myers. Michael Myers, mm-hmm. and that actress looked a lot like uh, man, I forget her name, but she was uh, she was in Lucky Louie, and. The show, Louie. You know who I'm talking about, right? No. I have no idea who you're talking about. Fuck. I do not remember the cast of Lucky Louie. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, she played Louie's wife. Uh, I forget I her name. Pamela I thought... Adlon? Maybe. I mean, I assume that you knew every single... That's her. That's the one. I... Good that, pickup. That actress looked a lot like her. I don't know if it was her. But uh, 
You literally know every single actor's name, Peter. Yeah, but not not television actors. Oh, got to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why Tom was trying to class it. Up. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know it's HBO, it's not TV, whatever. But I guess she went back to TV. I mean, we watch this on Peacock Premium, so that is TV. Oh God, what have I done? <laughs> think so. It was not. It was not her. Okay. Close I though. I didn't think so, but I thought, yeah, thought that was close. That playground was scene lady. was. I thought that was one of the better scenes in the movie. Yeah, but our, our Big Zone and I were talking about this during the film, uh, that, or I guess I should call it a movie during the movie. Um, that it, it's it's weird when when Michael uh, kills people and then sets them up, like stages them. That's weird. That's weird that he's staging bodies for people to find them like that. You right. Know? Like, obviously, they're going to be on the little fucking the carousel spinny thingy that's creaking around slowly mm-hmm. and creepily. But he put like a fucking pumpkin head on him. And. Uh, right. All the all, uh, the, uh, all the shit from silver what, shamrock masks from right. Halloween three. Maybe he's less staging them and more like, you know, not for people to find afterwards, but staging them for the other people. Because like the couple that was playing with the drone. Right. He let her watch as he as stabbed, stabbed you know, right. like he set that up for her. Well, I mean, say with Big the John, boyfriend little at John, the end. yeah, Big John, Little John, he set them, he set them up, but I think he killed them both individually. I don't think he, um, it's just weird that he's setting like, I mean, the, yeah, I feel like he's just like setting them. It just seems strange. Yeah. You know, Big John, Little John, he's like, you know what? You're going to, you're going to want to die, uh, have your corpses lying here with, uh, one of your heads on uh, Big John's head on Little John's lap, you know, mm-hmm. and just put them together like that, you know. He's a sweetie. He's a softy at heart. Is what I'm trying to say about Michael. Don't call him Mike. Is that what set him off? He doesn't like that. Oh shit! Is that what started this whole thing? Yeah. Mike, it's breakfast. His it- sister called him Mike, <laughs> and then. I was gonna say he said something, but I don't think. I mean, I guess he said something in what? 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 What would in he the say Rob in the zombie Halloween? Yeah, uh, what would he sound like in that? Where he's wearing your that best sick mic. fucking you kiss destroyer like shirt. Big Zo in that. Okay, so so if you do your best, young Mike, you say, Mike, it's time for breakfast. Mike, are you listening? It's time for breakfast, you little shit. Okay, I'll send you to school with an extra big lunch, honey. I love you so much. You're my shining star. Oh, give me those cheeks. Oh, give me those. Stop it. Now give me those other cheeks. Stop it. You're embarrassing me. I don't have friends. Why are you doing this to my butt cheeks? I'm going to spread them real quick. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Why? All right, have fun at school, sweetie. Okay, bye. So do you think it was something like that? It's been a while since I've seen the movie. Mm Mm-hmm. But that seems right. You know, I got to say, one of the most insulting things Matt Tomasello ever said to me was that I look like that kid from the Halloween remake. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Truth hurts. (laughs) (laughs) And this was, I think it was back when I was wearing my green Tony Hawk jacket, too. So I had like an actual green sort of army jacket like him, too. Sorry. Tom, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny that that you would be offended by something Matt would say. Have you seen the kid? <laughs> no. He looks like a freak. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he'd grow up to be Michael Myers, like very obviously. <laughs> so I don't know what that says about Big Zo. You mm-hmm. know, read into that as you will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's for the listener to decide. So then they go to the hospital, right. and everyone in the hospital, Lori Strode's like, I'm going to get out of this bed. I don't give a fuck, and injects herself with the painkiller. Right. And then they all band together, and they're like, evil dies tonight. 
evil dies. And they say that for like a good hour of the movie. And then the movie's over. And then the penguin kills himself. Oh, that was sad. And then they, Judy Greer really hated that. And then they roll know, right? the penguin into the river, yep. and the penguins take him away. Yeah, under Gotham. Uh huh. <laughs> right. Paul yeah. Rubens sheds a single tear. He's plotting. Yep. Now Paul Rubens was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, right? The movie, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not the TV show. I haven't seen that. Yeah, I haven't seen that either. But the movie, my God, is that a good movie? Classic. Well, they also brought Paul Rubens back to play penguin's father in gotham the tv show oh really yeah which i have not watched but that is something that makes me interested in it is that they had paul rubens play penguin's father in that i mean he's one of my favorite actors no he's fantastic on and off the screen he's one of my favorite people to go see a movie with yeah (laughs) that's what i'm trying to say Mm -hmm. and he just gets the vibe i'm going for and listen, he was at a he was at a porn he was at a porn theater when that happened. Everyone tries to make it out like he's a creep, you know. He was jerking off at a porn theater. I know. And Tom, so his like excuse the, makes sense, but when you're jerking off during Halloween Kills, it does change the vibe a little. It bit. It does a little bit. Well, okay. I mean, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with jerking off to a movie that you rented, especially on, during October. Uh, exactly, especially during October on your own Peacock Premium account. However, I will say. Maybe it was my bad to sign into that account at the Best Buy in South Bay Plaza and watch it there while I was jerking off. Yeah. I just thought it'd be cool to have 70 different screens and 40 to 70 people watching. Now, say what you will about Paul Rubens, but Mm -hmm. oh my God, Mystery Men? Mm. Oh, I love it. Kel Mitchell? Tom Waits? Mm Mm-hmm. Fantastic film. Mm -hmm. Ben Stiller? You know, it's almost as if Gene Garofalo. It's almost as uh, his area. Thank you. Oh my god. Oh my god. William H Macy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we covered. Oh my it god, all. this guy knows the movie. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, I think we. I think we got them all. There's one more. Janine Garofalo. No, I already no. said Janine oh, Garofalo. Shit. I missed that one. The that's guy like Kel Mitchell. from uh, As Good as It Gets. No, but that's not Jack Nicholson. Greg Kinnear. Mm-hmm. Greg Kinnear. Isn't he in that? Is he? Doesn't he play like a Superman analog who's like the bad guy? I forget. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. The villain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Back to Paul Rubens. It's as if they pulled him out of a jerk booth and they were like, oh my God, this man's jerking off in the jerk booth. Right. How could you? Did they have the decency to let him finish? Or is that what you have to get arrested for? It's almost as if they pulled him away and they were like uh, from a glory hole, and this man, and they were like, "Oh my God, this man's trying to find glory within the glory hole." Right? How could you? I mean, they really set him up. I mean, I just wanted to point out what a funny name that is. What glory hole? Yeah, we should call the next video after Power Suck. We should call it Glory Hole. I like it. Tom likes it. It's not even just the title. It's the idea of a glory hole. Always been a fan. Yeah, you'd probably sell it to more websites this way. But we spell it W-H-O-L-E. Oh. I get it. And we spell glory G-L-O-U-R-A-U-G-H-E-Y. X. So, while Laurie Strode's in the hospital, she thinks that she had killed Michael Myers mm-hmm. the entire time. She's like, oh, my God, we did it. We did it. We did such a Everyone good job. Everyone she sees, oh, yeah, she she's says, telling hey, her cop friend to hey, take more drugs. Hey, listen, we did it. We did it. Oh, my God, we did such a good job. Thank God I did such a good job. I killed him. We killed him. Good thing I made all those booby traps in my house. Mm-hmm. Take that, Michael. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they they finally uh, they go on to actually go to kill him for the last time, right? Because they hadn't killed him. No, no, they didn't. They didn't kill him. He didn't die in the fire. No, fuck. But uh, your favorite actress there? Mm-hmm. What's her name? Wait, are you asking me? Judy Greer. Oh, Judy Greer. Yeah, Judy Greer. What's she in adaptation? 
I mean, I didn't say she was my favorite actress. I said she was my favorite actor. Oh. Be, I mean, so she's from, from she's from in uh, Arrested Development. And uh, she's Jurassic kidding. World. I didn't see Jurassic World. It's fine that you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're the first one to tell me that, and I appreciate it. But she goes, and she's like, evil dies tonight. Yeah, Judy Greer kind of sucks in this movie. I mean, she's good. I like her, but her character just kind of, she's just like, her mom, she's like, the whole time she's like, no, mom, you're crazy. And then shit actually starts going down. I'm talking about the first one as well. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, she's pretty much in denial this whole movie or, you know, and then she, all she does is hope that penguin looking motherfucker. There, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis must have felt so vindicated for just after 40 years, whatever, to finally be able to prove her daughter wrong. She'd be like, look, it was worth it. We didn't even kill him, but it was worth it. Yeah. Building all those contraptions in the house. I mean, it was there were sick contraptions in there. And why was she wearing a Christmas sweater on Halloween? That was crazy. Could have been a Halloween costume. I, I thought it's because she hated Halloween. Oh, did she? I don't know. I'm just kind of connecting the dots right now. That, that a, would make sense. It was a pagan holiday. I, I think more more with the murders. Oh, 40, 40 years ago. Can't let anything slide, you know? Like, can't let anything go after 40 fucking years. You didn't hear the speech at the bar, man, clearly. Yeah, that's true. When he was talking about the booger man? The bogeyman. Um... And yeah, and long story short, she finds him. She takes off his mask. That's a big thing. He does like the mask. He loves his mask. And then... It's vintage. You can't find him like that anymore. He probably has a skin allergy. Can't wear the new ones. Michael chases after her, and he's like, oh, Give me my mask back. I want my mask. Stop. Stop. I want my mask. And then, like, finally, she's like, here you go, you little bitch. And then, uh, and then they, like, shoot him. Mm-hmm. And then she stabs him in the back of the spine. And they're like, oh, thank God he's dead. Am I missing anything, Peter? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he gets up again. What? Yeah, after they knock him down. Well, we stopped watching. Wait, he Tom, gets up again. Tom, Tom stopped the movie. He said, oh, thank God they killed him. I saw the knife going. I said, no one survived that. <laughs> he said, this is clearly the he end. Said, okay, now I know why they call it Halloween Kills. Stop. <laughs> How are like, they going to make a sequel out of this? Said, Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Click. Well, this is going to be, yeah. I said, 2022 is going to be a weird year for cinema. He said, we don't have to watch this garbage anymore. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, I guess... I guess we'll have to go back and finish it. I don't know. Do you, do you need to take a break? Yeah, should we? Should we go finish it right now? Yeah, let's go finish it right now real quick. All right, here we go. Uh, yeah. Okay, so he did get back up. I told you guys. Yeah. He got back up and then he killed her. Yeah, it's kind of uh, takes his backseats there. Well, he killed a lot of people before he killed her. Killed like all those people in that crowd. Oh, you're right. Killed Tommy Doyle or Boyle or was it Doyle or Boyle? Anthony Michael Hall, yeah, yeah from West Roxbury. Well, I mean Anthony Michael, uh, right, 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 right. Weird right, science, right, West himself. Roxbury, right, 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 dead. But yeah, then then he killed he killed Judy Greer. So I guess she's not going to be in the next one. Maybe we'll do some flashbacks. Maybe. I mean, just her getting killed in that window. If they bring back Loomis. Mm-hmm. That's true. They're going to get someone in some Judy Greer prosthetics. <laughs> yeah, I know. They yeah. <laughs> have another uh, Crispin Glover type uh, lawsuit on their hands. <laughs> Crispin exactly. Glover, another person we're looking to get on the Fancy Lad podcast. So. Oh, he'd be great. Well, that'd be fantastic. I think he would really enjoy it. Especially now we've branched out into uh, the movie Movies. territory. Right, right, right. Cinema. Cinema. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Um, speaking of cinema, did you like the overall look of the film? I mean, were there any things, any shots in particular that stood out to you? Uh, we already talked a little bit about 
the the seventies flashback stuff looking great. I the rest of it, I don't know. It felt like any other mid budget horror production right now. There's a few things here and there, but you know, it really was just kind of like keeping that style of some of the long lingering shots of Halloween, which work. They're established in the series. I'm good with them. But I don't know. Nothing like jumped out to me. Did you guys catch anything that was like particularly good? Mm. I mean, yeah, I, th- I just thought the stuff, the 70s stuff was the best looking stuff. And it was, I was kind of hoping that they would keep that style. And also, it, it wasn't even just the style. It was like kind of the the writing and the acting in that was very much in that that vein you know what i mean like uh but they didn't really do any of that and i don't think it was it was it didn't even seem like a, a horror movie it just seemed like a movie you know what i mean mm. that i didn't think there was anything suspenseful about really any of it at all uh and maybe that's just because stuff has become so you know, kind of contrived in the same, they're just doing the same shit over and over. But again, it was saying like the only, out of the only, the only thing out of the two movies that scared me was in the first one, the kid went to like poke like a dude with the butt of a gun. And I knew I was like, Oh, that guy's not dead. He's going to move. And he did move. And that was the only thing that scared me, you know, and I knew it was going to happen, but I don't know. I just feel like none of it really worked in a, a scary sense at all. Yeah, I agree. I think they were just trying to up the ante with more kills. And so the pacing is all, you're just like jumping from group to group. It's like, okay, we're going to see them killed this scene or they set up for being killed in the next scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The fake out of the kid not getting killed was probably in the beginning, the most suspense that there was you know, mm. where they didn't let on that. He just, popped up and killed somebody but i like there was one shot that i liked where it was uh one of the firefighters and it was his pov uh, mm. getting like an axe through the uh shield of his mask and him dying that way and also i was wondering during that entire scene i was like just for the sake of the cinematography i was like man now call me green you know but i was like how the hell did they film in this burning house? I was like, they had a whole crew in this house that was burning. You never seen that movie uh, with Kurt Russell and the burning buildings? No. What's that movie called? Anyone? There's a ride of it at Universal Studios, or there used to be. They literally just turn on a bunch of like propane tanks and just it gets, it gets uncomfortably hot. I assume that's how they filmed it. Yeah, well, I thought it was pretty dangerous for the cast and crew. Yeah, well, they're shooting on digital now, so the film doesn't burn the same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about the film anymore. And I don't know if anybody knows this, but Michael's mask was actually partially burned, uh, which is why it looked different from the last one. Do you think that had anything to do with the fire in the house that he was stuck in? Uh, yeah, I fucking do, Tom. <laughs> oh shit, my bad. Actually, I I really do. Oh, you want to bet? How much? Fifty bucks. Uh, too rich for my blood. Two forty nine ninety nine. He, he can't. He can't. He, he won't be able to turn it down. How about two bets? Mm hmm. Twenty five dollars a pop. Deal. All right. We'll check later. That's a good move. All right. All right. And then I'll bet again. Double or nothing. Four bets. Yeah. $25 a pop. Yep. It's a good deal. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think we've uh, pretty much covered everything. Yeah. If anyone listening to this has already seen the movie, they're, they're going to be confused more now than they were before they watched it. If if nothing else, I hope people are just as confused after listening to this after I was watching the movie. Oh, I'm pretty sure we will have conveyed that pretty yeah. well. But what does happen next? 
I Where does it go? Oh, that's a good point. Uh, but you know what? I was wondering, B- Big Zo, what, what do you think is going to happen in the last one? Well, Lori Strode's still around, right? Oh, she's still around. She's so, still got a thing about Michael Myers, too. She's got this weird, sick fascination with Michael Myers. I don't know what it is. Well, it's definitely not that they're related, because they're not. Mm-hmm. So I think it's personal, though. But, you know, after a certain point, it's just like, let it go. You know, let let sleeping dogs lie. Let bygones be bygones. How about it? And I think that that's what the third movie is going to be about. Make For, it up. Yeah, forgive and forget. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Halloween, forgive and forget. Where they shake. Mm-hmm. They hug it out. Mm-hmm. And they go on their separate ways. Michael, of course, becomes a manager at Target. Right. And... Lori becomes the CEO of a budding crypto company. Weird. That's really where you think it's going to go? Yeah. Uh, Prove me wrong. Okay. I don't know how I'm going to do that, Mm -hmm. but I will try. And I'm going to put effort into it. Serious effort over the next year. Give me one year. (laughs) One year. All right. Well, you know what? Now that we've covered the whole thing, why don't we go around? Why don't we give our new skull rating of the uh, movie? Peter, you start. I still think it's a firm two and a half skulls. You know, I mm, this firm. this mm, firm this movie sucked, but I liked it. You know, again, I'm a fan of the Rob Zombie Halloween. Everyone that likes Halloween hates that one. So, whatever. Yeah. You know, I don't know if this movie, you know, Tom was mentioning how the last movie had, uh, to me earlier, had this uh, comic relief in it. I don't know if this movie had the same, uh, it didn't have like one, which was the kid. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this movie really had one character or anything that was you know, given too much comic relief in the movie. That's not going to, I was just pointing that out, it's not going to, you know, change my skull rating. Although my skull rating has changed to three skulls. Oh, wow. Yeah, Peter Peter talk, Peter made a convincing argument when he said this thing sucks. <laughs> but I liked it. That is a convincing argument. But I'm going to stay with uh, I'm going to stay with Pete at my r- initial rating, which is still three skulls. Not bad. Mm-hmm. Not bad. But yeah, I mean, it's just I think all right. I I think it is foolish to go into any of these kind of movies thinking you're going to actually like it. You know what I mean? Um but it was it was not a total piece of trash, you know? It was good. It was fine. It was enjoyable for one time view. Mm-hmm. So I think still stays at a solid 3. Yeah. And if Michael Myers doesn't play Michael Myers in the next one, I'm going to be pissed. You know, they tried to get him for this one, but schedules just didn't line up. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, talk about it. hashtag missed opportunities. Mm. Did you see the Scream 5 trailer before we before we go? So oh, curious. Yeah. I uh I'm here for it. I my big hope is that they bring back some of the old killers somehow you know there's got to be a can't remember right now there's got to be someone who dies off screen or you know gets up whatever mm-hmm. it's fine bring back skeet Ulrich. why not bring back matthew yeah yeah everyone loves matthew lillard it's true he's had a real uh he's had a good he's had a good career since then i feel like the shag man dude he's still he still he voices shaggy the spy who's shaggy the Spy Who is Shaggy. Great movie. Great fucking film. Great film. Oddly enough, not in The Shaggy Dog. No. That, that, that is a real overlook. Well, anyway, I think Scream 5 looks like a piece of shit. Don't say that about Courtney Cox. Well, that's the one thing that's good about it is you like to see the gang all back together. But besides that, it looks like the most generic horror movie. Not tongue-in-cheek whatsoever. 
I think it's uh, I might be mixing it up with someone else, but I think it's being directed by the guy that made Forty Seven Meters Down Two. It's a great movie. Mm. Gives me a lot of hope. If this guy can save the Forty Seven Meters Down franchise, mm-hmm. maybe there's hope for Scream. You do love that franchise. Really, I just love the second one. Yeah, first one does have Matthew Modine though. Star of Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. Oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You're a movie guy. <laughs> Star of the remake of Wrong Turn, which we'll have to do on the next uh, movie. We'll, we'll do wrong, the entire Wrong Turn series. That's really the Ung Sung Horror franchise. Oh, it does not have its, you know, star on the uh, on Hollywood Drive or whatever it is yeah. that it deserves. Exactly. I think it's Hollywood Drive. Well, you know what? Thanks. <laughs> You know, I just want to thank all the listeners for tuning in to this uh, spooktacular edition of the Fancy Led podcast. Yeah, and I hope we didn't spoil the movie for you any more than it was spoiled. No, but Peter, I want to thank you for being our very special guest. Hey, thanks for having me. Tom, I want to thank you for being the co-host, as always. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. (laughs) And... um, (laughs) Yeah, I mean, does anyone have any closing remarks? Uh, thanks, Big Zo. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you're welcome. Thank In you, In that Big case. Zo. Oh, hey, Peter, you're, you know, you're welcome, too, actually. And, uh, yeah, on that note. Oh, yeah, Big Zo, you have anything you want to say? You can just end it here, Tom. Okay, that's, that's a good idea. Unless, Big Zo, you have to say. Keep on rocking in a spooky world. That's too scary. I'm going to have to cut that out. All right. Please do. Uh, Yeah.